40 now. So what I want to do is take a look at Evernote. Um, I will tell you right off the bat that some of you are here because you said that Evernote is one thing that you think you should be using, but you can't figure out how to use it yet, uh, which is where I was in my life for about three or four years. Um, so hopefully everybody created an Evernote account and you downloaded it and installed on your different devices. You can download it and use it on the uh, Mac, on the PC. You can have it on your Android device. You can have it on your iOS devices, so your iPad and your uh, iPhone. Um, you also can use Evernote on their website. So the beauty is if I go to Evernote.com, I can sign in and I can access Evernote everything that I have in Evernote there also. Okay, so that's one of the best features of Evernote is the fact that it's everywhere all the same time. Um, this is helpful when you go out and you're in your classroom and you get stuck and you don't have access to some of your notes. Um, this is a great way to be able to access everything. You can see I have way too much. I have almost 3,000 notes in there. Okay, so um, Evernote's a great product. It's free. Uh, there is a premium service that's available to you. I pay for the premium service. There are a couple extra features to it, one of which um, that I like the most. I believe the best benefit is the ability to take a PDF and drag it right into your note. And instead of it, having it as an attachment to a note, it opens up the note in its entirety. Um, for your purposes, the majority of you, you're fine with the free use. Okay, the way that Evernote does their billing is um, they basically give you a certain amount of uploads per month. Chances are you're not going to hit the amount of uploads. So you really don't need to buy anything. Um, so the trick with Evernote is this is one of those products that it's the do all be all like for everything. And the challenge is how do you actually use it? I felt as many of you have already stated to me, you feel like you should be using Evernote on a regular basis. It's just you don't use it, and you're trying to figure out how to use it. That's where I was for about two or three years. And I kept coming back to Evernote and kept wanting, I wanted to use Evernote. I wanted to be able to, to have it, because people that use it love it. You know, fools like me stand in front and say, this is a great product, you should start using it. The biggest step, the first step, is the most important part. It's just start using it. That's the biggest key. So what I... What I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a couple ways that I use Evernote. And then you can start to use it as well. So one of the first ways is obviously when you have, yeah. Yeah. It will, the, what I noticed is the PC version, there is a setting on there to automatically sync. A colleague of mine had that issue where it should automatically sync everywhere. Um, so, for example, um, if I have my phone and I'm out at a conference, what I can do is I'll be sitting at a, at a conference. I was at NCTE at a hack jam with Greg, and somebody mentioned a couple websites I might want to check out. I didn't carry all this stuff around, but I wanted to remember it. So I started up Evernote on my phone, and I took a note. Uh, it automatically synced to the app on my Mac. It also synced to the website and everything else. Um, so it should just automatically sync. The PC version, I know, has been a little glitchy. Um, so you might have to hit like the sync button, but it should save. But it will also automatically go to um, the website. Um, if you use uh, the iPad, if you use a mobile device and you use Evernote and you uh, take a picture, it's going to do optical character recognition on it. So basically, it'll scan the picture for any text information. So you can scan uh, handouts from a conference. You can scan receipts. You can scan uh, business cards. There's a lot of people that will take a picture of a business card and they'll add it into Evernote and then save it there, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna be able to set up Evernote. 
Um, I have a system. It's not the perfect system, but it's a system that works for me. When I start up Evernote, you have as many notebooks as you want to create. Um, I use notebooks and I have tabs. The way that I set up my system is I have a uh, shared notebook. So if I want to you know, send out something to Craig to work on or put out something for students in my, one of my classes at UNH, I also have an inbox and archive. Basically, any, any note that I create automatically goes to the inbox, no matter what. So if I, anything that we're going to talk about today about creating a note, anything that I create automatically goes to the inbox. Then I process that note and then put it into archive. So the archive is basically the junk drawer for everything under the sun. So if I have an, right now in my inbox, this is a note that I had. It's in the inbox. There's no tags. I can tell when I updated it. Basically what happened was I was at home and I was reading uh, Feedly on my phone, which is a uh, RSS reader, a Google reader in my uh, phone. Feedly is on the Mac and the Mac. Uh, so I was reading on Feedly and I came across an app for the iPad I wanted to check out. It was called Pixel. And basically it's a reading app. You can read books and draw and I was like, this would be cool with some of the students I work with. It's also something that I'd want to work on with my son. Um, so I wanted to check it out later, but I know that I'm scattered right now. So what I did was I saw it here on my phone, and I sent it to the Evernote. So here, now in my inbox, I have a note, and it basically tells me what this is all about. What I could do, usually my process is I'll go to Tags, and I'll type in iPad, and I'll type Apps, and then I would say maybe education. So what I'm doing is I have one note and I'm tagging it with multiple tags. And these are just markers. These are ways for me to think back if I'm looking for something later. You'll notice that the tags over here are populated. So I have um, for the six-year program I started up, I have 450 tags. I have um, apps. I have Android. I have 44 tags. So these are notes or tags that I, these are tags that I attach to each note to keep them organized for me. I also have the link um, here. Where is it? That's not it. Where did it go? Right there. So embedded in the tag itself is a link back to the website that I saved it from. So now I can quickly punch view in iTunes and I can download this immediately to my iPad. Then, yeah. So just, um, I just want to sort of get the history of yep. where this came from. Is, um, do you collect notes that go into a notebook? Like, what do you have notes that go into notebook? The way I have it set up is I have one big notebook, and this is just a way for me to process. Um, because some of my, what will also happen is I have colleagues that will have a notebook for NCD, a notebook for um, their, you know, uh, Shakespeare class. They'll have a notebook for, you know, English department materials. They have all these notebooks. That's a fine way to organize stuff. The problem is, If you tag it, then this is basically, it's just taking the whole organizational system and flipping it. So if you have one notebook that everything's in, this, to me, is my processing. This is the way, it's almost like these are the notebooks that I'm keeping. The, the nice thing is that these notebooks, I can apply to multiple, you know, I can basically say this document belongs in a bunch of different notebooks. Um, because you're going to have documents that go across. Mm -hmm. You might get something at a department meeting that will affect the way that you teach, but it also might be something you want to share with colleagues at a conference. But if you and just you dump it all in there, you can do it. I created those. Yep, 
it's just my system. I mean, it's it. The, everybody that's on Evernote has their own different system. This works really well for me. Yeah. Yeah. So here I will show you uh, Common Core state standards. So here under all notebooks, Common Core. So I have Tim Shanahan had a piece on Common Core guided reading, and I bookmarked that. Then there's uh, English language arts competency model, Common Core inquiry, Common Core standards. So this is a document from Connecticut. Then here is uh, the state document. To me, ultimately, what Evernote has become, this is, my department head the other day called it a trapper keeper. This, <laughs> this is my, like, where I save everything. And it's everywhere I go. Um, originally, what I did is, I had this thing here. Where is it? I had this thing. A bunch of these moleskin notebooks. And I'd go to, like, meetings, and I'd write down all the notes, and... You know, I have all this written out, and so I did like lit reviews on this one is uh, writing and use of technology and writing instruction. So I have all these notes scribbled out, and I have tons of these at home. Then ultimately, I'm like, this is just collecting dust. So, and this is just one example. This is where I started is instead of using this to write down my notes and capture my notes, I started doing it in Evernote. And once I started with that one piece, then I started adding on more and more things that I did with it. Um, now I use it for probably too much. So, what? Oh, yeah. Yep. So, this is how I set it up. Did you have a question? No, they're all across everywhere. Yep. Yeah, because if you, that's my trick. That's the only thing I don't. Yeah, because what you can do is you can go up and say all notebooks um, and then all the tags in there. So you can have it really organized out. Um, the truth of the matter is I don't use the tags as much when I negotiate. Like earlier when I said I'm going to go to Common Core, that's usually what I don't do. What I will do is when I have all these, I'll say all notebooks, and I'll say critical evaluation. Did I spell it right? Yeah. And I can look across everything. Or the other day, I sat there and I said, is it going to work? The other day, I said, OK, I was going to a cookout and I wanted to make this onion jelly that I saw on Lifehacker one day and I bookmarked it. And instead of me Googling it to try and hunt it down, I know that I bookmarked it and saved it into Evernote, so I just searched in here. So this is your own notebook that you can search, you can go through and hunt stuff down um, very quickly, very easily. You can share with this, you can some teachers use this as like a big online notebook for all their kids to use, a resource. I, I don't use that uh, that way. I use this for me. To me, if I want to have an online collaborative document, Google Docs is already there, and I use it a little too often also. Um, It'll, it'll put this software on, and it's pretty much all the same setup. The PC version and the Mac version have subtle differences, and that's most of what you see here. Um, the right now, I'm using online monitoring, and I'm not touching it. Yep. But I went to the program that you can use. I'm not just going to open it. Are you on the website? No. Yeah, you have to download the... The, Matt, the Windows version. Yeah. 
on your computer. Yeah, I, I've been using it, so this is for later, and then these are for now. What else is in there? Well, you can distribute any way you want. Wow. Um, thank you, sir. Okay. Um, There's eight of these are the okay. Cards. Those are eight of those. All right. Um, so we'll get that the app running up on the machine for you. Oh, you got it. Um, so basically, that's my system, is I have the inbox, and then I have archive, and I create notes. I dump everything into the inbox. It's, it's, so now what we're doing is talking about notes. And you have the opportunity to search it, index it, organize it however you want. So once you have a system set up, and there's no foolproof system. I have issues with this one. Once you have the system set up, then we move to the, the topic of creation of notes. That's when I started using it more. What I first started doing is um, using it for note taking in and of itself. So if I look at education department, so like all of you, I would sit there at department meetings and I would have to take notes. Initially, it started like this. So I'd bring my MacBook to a meeting, I'd sit there, I'd bang out some notes. What I do now is I have my iPad because I guess I'm supposed to talk the talk. I have my iPad, and I got the little keyboard. So I have my iPad, and I take notes like that. This is also nice for conferences. You know, you could sit there. You're not lugging this thing around. You don't really need it. I mean, the iPad version itself is pretty decent. So I would use this for notes. One other thing that's really sweet for this um, and I can show you on the iPad version. So let's say you're at a department meeting and you go to take a note. So I click on new note and I can call this uh, Evernote test. Okay, um, I'm gonna say um, New Lit Institute and I'm gonna say apps now, if I want, I can just start typing text about today's meeting. Okay, I can just keep notes on what's happening. Here's all the formatting stuff that you're used to. Uh, this button right here is if I want to share the note. I don't really use that often. I've emailed the note to people. It's sort of pointless. I'd rather copy paste it out and put it in the email um, itself. Um, what is helpful is this little I right here. This gives you a little bit more information. It tells you uh, when and where you created the note. So if you really want to search down and say, I know it was during this week, um, you can have attachments. So let's say you have a department meeting and they give you the meeting notes, you know, the agenda in a Word doc or a PDF, you can just attach it to the note. But what's also very nice is you can record. You can record audio of the note. It works really well on the computer. It works really well on the iPad. It works really well on your iPhone. It works really well on your Android phone. So I can sit here, record the meeting, take notes as I'm reading it. This audio saves to Evernote. So now it's instantaneously available on the website, on your computer, everywhere. I gotta take a look at the PC version. So I'm right here. Does it have one on there or no? Oh, there's more um, PC websites and PC versions. This one does attach the table and it does have Is there a mic? Yeah, yeah. Alright, sweet. I wanna make sure I wasn't lying. So you can record the audio and save it. One thing that I started doing, especially if you're doing this for a meeting, my department head will email me the agenda, and everybody like prints it out there. I just open it up, I copy paste all the text, I dump in a note, and then I annotate the note as I'm going along. 
So if I go to, so I'm going to delete this note because I don't need it anymore. So add department. So what I'll do is I'll take the agenda notes and I'll paste it into my note and then I just annotate the stuff that's important to me. So now what's nice is later on when I'm trying to figure out what was being said, I can just go in and search my 35 notes from different department meetings. So one great way is just using this to take notes in meetings. That's how I started using Evernote again, and it worked well. Then, and it's, all of this information is here on the page. Um, then what I did is I started using it to bookmark websites. This is when it really got problematic. And not problematic like it didn't work well. I mean, it worked a little bit. Um, I started using Evernote to bookmark it. Because I don't know how you guys are. Uh, I, I, I'm online a lot. Okay? I read online way too much. Um, I used to have, I used Chrome as my browser. I used to have a ton of bookmarks. And then you sit there, you're like, well, at least I have one bookmark. And I'll, you know, like I said before, Tim Shannon even had a blog post about Tom Core. I want to go back and read it. Because we have all those read it later ads and everything else, and used to hate them. I'm like, I want to go back and read that, but where was it? And then you're Googling it, and you're searching for it, and you can't find it. Um, you have the link, and it might work, it might not work. If you use Evernote and you clip it, it saves the web page. The whole web. It saves the, the text, it saves the images, it saves the links, it saves everything about it. So I have, this works in Chrome, and this works in Firefox. So if you use Internet Explorer, I can't help you. Um, so if I'm online, let's say I go to Lifehacker. Okay, so they, let's see, this is actually something that I would be interested in. Make great iced coffee with an arrow press. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, I definitely want to save this for later. And instead of bookmarking it and saving it, so I had this little Evernote web clipper button. Okay, this is in Chrome, it's an extension. In Firefox, it's an add-on. Um, we can add this later. But all I do is I click clip to Evernote. Now there's options for me. I can save the full page. I can save uh, just an article. I can save the URL. I can also like do save selection and drag it and only save a chunk. So I can save this whole page. So I'm in Chrome now, and I'm going to add tags. I'm going to say eat, and I'm going to say coffee. I've done this before, sadly. OK, so it's under save full page, and I'm going to hit the button. This is a new function in the Clipper that I don't really see any use for, but some people might think that it's valuable. It will show me other clips that I've taken from Lifehacker, and it shows me, you know, this is one that I did on Coffee Jelly from Lifehacker back on April 19th. So it says it clipped it. It's ready to go. Now what I can do is if I hit close, if I go to the website, let's refresh it. There it is. The whole website. Also, if I go to the app, come on. pulling the, app, the website down for me. So what I started doing is I started bookmarking, uh, not bookmarking, but basically saving all the websites in Evernote. Because then the nice thing now is, is it in there? Yeah, so it's in there. But the nice thing is, like I said before, let's say I go to all notebooks, and I'm off in some other website. I can say iced coffee. And it's going to search through all my notes. And apparently, at some point, in the handbook of reading research, they talk about ice coffee. So it's in there as well. But that is how I also started using it, is I started bookmarking everything that I use. 
that I want to save. So now it's available anywhere and I can search for it. And then the nice thing is it's giving me the whole website here. I can just pull out text that I want and I can go back to the website at any point and check it out because here, let me go to this page, it's easier to see. So here's the website that I just saved. I can go back in and I can edit the title. I can edit my tags. I can add more. Hold on. Uh, I might want to try this later. So now I just have a, a copy of the website that I can go back at any point. I can index. I can search within. Um, I have the link back. I can record stuff about it. All the it's it's just another note. Yes. It's always there. If the website changes, if the website goes down, think about how many times you send. Yeah. And then the other thing is, like, let's say, let's say you had a website that you wanted to send your students to all the time, and it goes down, or it changes, or whatever. You still have the web address. So what I can do is I can take this note, I can put it over into shared. So now I have a shared notebook. I can, you can make that link public. So I can now send the kids to my note out on, so here's my no cook jelly freezer jams on serious eats. I didn't try this one yet. So if I go to copy share URL to keyboard. So then you say to your kids, so now you give them a link. This is a link to your copy of the website on Evernote. So now you're saving this and you're providing access so that they can use it later. Yep. And you could annotate it also. Yep. say, okay, here is, you know, here's my list of class notes that I want you to have access to. And you could have a shared notebook, and your shared notebook you can send to have access, so you can edit and stuff like that. So you have a shared notebook, and all you say is, shared notebook, public. And you take your note, you put it into the public folder, and you tell your kids, here's the URL for my public folder, and say, the notes for this upcoming test are in the shared Yeah. What you could do is the same way. You, you create a note and you put a list of, you know, here's a list of 10 links mm -hmm. that I want you to go research. Here's a list of 10 links. Put it in a note um, and then you put it out in the shared folder. My shared folder is set up. Let's see. Uh, share. How do I do this? Edit. I set my shared folder up so that it's all public. All right, here it is. So here's my shared notebook settings. Uh, you can set it up to, I don't do a lot of the sharing, obviously. To me, I was trying to use it for sharing. 
There's many other tools like Google Docs, you know, or you can put together a wiki space or something like that. To me, this has basically just become my book um, because I have way too many things I've tried and filtered through. So here's a public URL. So this would be the URL that you go to. Um, Bud the teacher. Some of you might know him. Bud the teacher uses this. He set up a shared notebook for make, hack, and play. i got to figure out how I can get to it. But Bud the teacher uses this to share resources and collect all the data. So it's all about creating notes. There's other ways that I create notes, um, one of which is there's another extension. Anybody here use um, Read It Later, or Instapaper, or any of that stuff? They sort of have a version on here called Clearly. Um, it's a plugin for Evernote. So let's say I'm on here. Hulu Plus is on Apple TV now. Woohoo. So let's say you look at this and you want to save this, but you want to read it later on your iPad or wherever. There is a plugin called Clearly. What it'll do is it'll take the website, strip it all down, save just what the important parts might be. You can change it. You can make it, uh, you know, different colors. You can print it out if you want. I guess that sort of cancel, delete, you know, defeats the purpose. But then this saves right to Evernote also. So this is the same thing as the bookmarking the page, but it's just stripping out all the extra data. So I use it for taking notes. I use it for bookmarking. I was using Delicious a lot. I tried to get into Digo, but my problem was the social part of bookmarking, I could never figure out. My problem was I spent so much time doing the social part and nobody was being social with me. So I was finally like, I'm just gonna focus on my own stuff here. What I could do and what I've been thinking about doing is taking a lot of my notebooks and just making them all public. Now they're social by proxy, you know, but that's one thing I've been thinking about doing. Um, well, I'm trying to become the person that can do the stuff. On Digo, I mean, you're dealing with a much um, richer, more powerful tool. Digo is a great teaching tool. If there are teachers I see that use Digo and they use it really well, if you're using it and you're using it well, I would stick with that. The recording piece is very nice. Some of my pre-service features. Yeah. Some of my pre-service teachers use Evernote as like a almost like Dropbox. And what they'll do is they'll have a PowerPoint for class they want to present that night. They'll attach the PowerPoint to the Evernote. Then they go into class and they sign in on the class computer. They sign in to Evernote, download the PowerPoint, and play it from there. And I'm like. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, Yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff is, it might not be as slick, because if you have like Chrome or Firefox, I'm logged in right now. Nobody else really uses this machine. I hit the button, it saves. So what they might have to do is have like two windows open, and here's Evernote, the web version open, and then here's the website, and then copy the URL, paste it in, stuff like that. It's, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it would be playing with it for a little bit. Um, I use Evernote for many other things. Like I said, I scan uh, receipts from conferences. I take pictures of handouts um, and put them in there. 
Uh, like I said, I'm trying to go to a paperless system. If you use Skitch with it or uh, ta tag it or snag it, snag it, what you can do is you can annotate a page. So this is what I did for some middle school kids I was working with. I took a screenshot of, I searched for octopus, and I was trying to teach kids how to read search engine results. And I said, okay, I want you to use these to limit your search. Here's, here's basically how you read a search engine results page. So I used Skitch, a program that basically is bought by Evernote recently, to annotate the picture and then save it into Evernote. But that's after using it for a while. So I would suggest using Evernote to take notes. I would suggest trying to use it to um, take uh, maybe bookmarking. I would suggest using Evernote to possibly, if you want to use stickers for the front, that's uh, cool. It's not a, I think I did, Evernote sent us a bunch of swag. Um, they, I had my favorite Evernote sticker. You can see I have one on the front of mine. My favorite Evernote sticker is the one that says, um, I'm not being rude, I'm taking notes. Um, so there is a lot of cool stuff out there. Um, I have, I have two sessions on Evernote, so I don't want to like really go back. <laughs> I got large, I got small. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll do between the sessions. Um, but there are multiple ways of using Evernote. It ultimately comes down to how you want to be able to use the product, um, what possible uses you would see in it. All right, so what I have large, small. Is anyone interested? There you go. I was like, ain't too proud. Small. I got small, large, and I have small in the greens. And then I have in the gray, large, extra large, and medium. What I, what I figure I'll try and do is I'll save one bag for the next session, and I'll probably give half the t-shirts out here. The stickers are all there. Um, and then what I have to figure out is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, let me stop this recording. <laughs>